Let's build on what we learned so far about plotting or data visualization in MATLAB. So far I had only uh, one function x that was a sign of some value which was time and time was this uh, from 0 to 5 or 501 divisions or elements and I used this, these commands to plot uh, and save the plot uh, as I wished. But now let's say I want to create a second variable y. Now this time it's cos of 2 times pi times t divided by t. And I want to plot this one as well. So before I do that, um, I want to modify the code that I had written earlier. I come here and I say, hold on, which means keep the previous plot in the figure and then plot t for time in the horizontal axis and y for the vertical axis and now this time call it blue and single or solid line and let's make this one also a solid line and this is again line width is 1.5 now if I run this I'm afraid there are going to be some errors but let's just do it and actually there was no error but um, I thought there would be as you can see the red line is the sign and the blue line is the um, the cos and this is a title is the title displayed there displacement meter and actually um, something there but now how would I know which one is what the way to do that is to come here and say legend and because I have two plots in my figure I need to give two legends first thing I want to say sign was the first one that I did and the cool thing about MATLAB is that I can actually use LaTeX formats to uh, put some stuff there uh, like Greek letters for instance here if I put backslash and type theta instead of typing backslash theta it's going to print theta as the Greek letter theta in the legend and I can say now the second one was cos uh, backslash theta. Close that and actually put a parenthesis here. And do this like that. And if I run this, you can see that the plot is, or the, the legend is created here. But its location is not necessarily the best because it's, it's blocking some of the, the uh, figure. I can move it, or I can actually say, in legend where I define my legend which is here location and give best and if I do this now it's gonna find the best place to put the um, the legend which is not necessarily the best in here but one thing for example I can do is to say south outside so this one means that it will put it in the south side or the bottom of the figure and outside the figure so run this see that it came there but there's a problem that I don't like about this is that it it made my plot look smaller so what I want to do is put a comma here and my lines are getting too narrow to fit in one line if I wanted to print this so I want to go to the next line while I'm giving these the rest of the parameters for legend so what I do is put space and three dots and then press enter which means whatever I write in the next line is the is the continuation of the commands I was giving to legend so I'm going to say orientation and the value for that is horizontal if I do this see that the um, the legend is horizontal and I have two plots in here this is one way of showing multiple plots but sometimes you want to separate them in, in separate ones but still one figure that's where subplots come into play so I created a new figure make this position um, 
150, 150 again on top of the other one. And now this one, I want to have still the 800 for length, but 800 for height because I'm going to have two subplots. I want to plot them on top of each other. So I say subplot, and I forgot a, a V here. And let me put some lines so that I can actually go back and forth. Two, one, one. The first number means the number of rows, basically, uh, as an array. And the second number means the number of columns. And then now I have the, uh, the number of the, the, the plot that I'm looking at. So this means if I have a two by one, this way, this means the top plot. And then here, plot T versus X with a, let's say a blue solid line and line width uh, is equal to 1.5. And now I put subplot to one, Two, which means uh, the second part of the subplot and plot T versus Y. Again, I just want to give the blue solid dash and then I want to say make this one equal to um, line width 1.5. So if I just run this and let's say I don't want to save this figure now, if I run it, I'm going to have two plots or two figures. The first one is this one and the second one is here. So the first one was two plots in one figure and I have uh, two separate ones as subplots and there. So let's actually comment out all these lines because I don't want to keep having two plots. And let's say I want to call this one H1. And I want to call this one H2. And after the subplot one, I want to write something. I want to say Y label, sign. And in the labels, as I have experienced, MATLAB doesn't do the LaTeX format. So I don't think putting this is going to work. Let's just give it a shot though, but I don't think it's going to work. Oh, it actually did, so that's good. And for the second one, I'm going to do Y label as the cos of theta. And for the second plot, I'm actually going to do the X label time, or let's put it time and seconds. Then I want to say set GCA font size is equal to 12 again set GCA font weight is bold and Notice that if I run this, only the second plot is going to change. See the font and uh, uh, the font size and the font weight of the second plot is changed. The first plot does not have any change in its font. So I need to re repeat this for that one as well. So I'll put it right here and let me separate the plots or the subplots in so that we can see what's going on. And here I'm going to say grid on the same thing for the second figure grid on. If I run this, everything looks the same. And I can also put a title here or title here as well if I needed to. But if you if you look at this, I've done the same thing multiple times. And here is where having a figure will be very help. Having a for loop will be actually will be actually very helpful. So instead of running X and Y, I want to say Z1, and let me go to the workspace and make sure that um, I'm correct. Z1, or let's say Z is equal to zeros, two, and length 
x or length length t. Then z1 and everything is equal to x. z2 and everything is equal to y. So I created a, a 2 by 501 array z, called it zeros, and then I gave values to that. And what I want to do is say z1 and z2 in here. If I run this, actually nothing showed up um, for some reason it's all zeros let me figure out what is Z oh because I I understand what I did I had to do this and I had to do this all right now let's try this and as you can see Z showed up instead of X and Y, and that's that's going to make my life a lot easier, especially if I had multiple or more than two, say, 10 uh, figures in here. So instead of writing all of this, I want to do a for loop. So I'm going to comment all of these out. Let's say for C and T is equal to 1 to um, 2, because that's the uh, number of thing number of plots I want to do in a subplot and I put this for loop after the figure so it's going to create a figure and in the for loop I'm going to start with subplot I know I want to make it two and two by one but the number of figures is going to be determined by the C and T and I'm going to say plot T Z C and T and everything and again line width is 1.5 and let's make this a blue solid line. I should have put that. I don't want this here. Let me remove it. All right. Remove this uh, comma and a solid line here. Other things I want to do, I'm actually going to copy from here. And on Oops, I'm gonna select everything and push tab and everything goes up there. And so far, let's see what happens if I end this for a loop and if I run this, you see that it happens, but there is still some problem. They both are saying sine theta and I don't want that to happen. So one thing I can do is to say, TTL for title is equal to sine theta and close the parentheses and close that. And then the second one is cos theta. I'm just going to copy this and put in here, make this cos theta and, and close that. And title or Y label. Actually, it should be LBL for label. This is not title. So Y label is equal to LBL CNT. Now let's see what happens if I run this. You can see that they both changed properly. And I want to change, I want to give a X label to the second uh, subplot. So I can come here and say subplot 212 x label is time seconds. Now you see that that is actually created there. Now I, I put these uh, in separate um, figures or separate plots in the same figure. Sign is in here, cos is here, time is there. And I put time here because the x axis of both of these are actually the same thing and it saves space for me if I do that. If I wanted to bring this time sec here as well, it would make the plots a little bit smaller in height. And sometimes that's not what I, what I want to do. So I created that and um, the subplots are made there. And this is especially handful if I have multiple files or multiple uh, data that I want to plot in a single uh, figure. So uh, using a for loop, I can actually uh, take advantage of that. 
If I wanted to put a title for the first one though, I would say I would do subplot two one one. I forgot to put the one there, and say title and give title there. And if I run this, it's gonna create that title for me. And let's save this figure as plot zero two dot fake. And if I press this, I run it and close this figure, see that plot two is created. Now I wanna teach something very interesting. I wanna clear everything close all, make sure that everything is closed and CLC and say f is equal to fig or open fig and let's wait for it and it wants the file name so plot underscore zero two dot fig and I say next line is save as or if I just run this portion you see what happens is it opens the, the plot for me and I can say save as and the fig is I want to say um, I think F and file name is plot 02 and this time as uh, TIFF is one of the high resolution files if I do this I see that a figure plot two that tiff just create was created over there and let's wait for it and basically open outside matlab and it saved it as a tiff figure this is also again handful if i need to or helpful if i'm if i need to um, s save multiple figures as tiff if i want to put them in a journal paper what i can do basically is um, say f1 is equal to the first one and let me just copy this line and do f2 is equal to the second one for um, actually this is going to be a little bit um, challenging but for cnt is equal to one to two because that's it and end it in here fcnt and for the file name what I want to do is to say num to str which means change the number into a string and I want to say cnt is the number I want to change now I have to give the format for it and the format is plot underscore um, backslash or percentage sign d and put a zero here too if I need to I don't have to do that but I just do and then give it a tiff and if I do this if I run it and then at the end I want to close all let's see if it actually does what I think it will and plot one that tiff is created and then plot two that tiff is also created and this is very helpful because I like automation and this will, if I have multiple figures that I've saved as fig and I want to save them as a TIF, I can just write a code like this, uh, get the file names and uh, basically save them as TIF and then import them in a Word document or for my LaTeX documents.